One of the most important factors in options pricing is time. It's the value of time. It's the passage of time. And that passage of time really affects the value of our options. Because much of an option's value is this time value that's baked into it. And depending on whether you bought the option or sold the option, your options value is either going to increase as time passes or it's going to decrease as time passes. One of the four primary option Greeks is theta and theta measures that passage of time value, whether it increases our options value or decreases our options value. Theta gives us a good way to gauge that effect on our options positions. So let's discuss the option Greek theta. We've already covered the Greek delta on a previous video and delta I think is by far the most important of the Greek to know about, but theta really is a close second because so much of what happens with your options positions over time is based on that time value that is baked into that option. But before we get into that, once again, what are the Greeks? Well, the option Greeks, they're important metrics that help you monitor your current options positions and manage your portfolio. So the Greeks, they're not used in the trade selection process typically. You don't put on a trade based on things like, you know, theta and Vega and, you know, the, any of the Greeks, right? That's not usually what they're used for. They're used to help manage existing positions that you've already put on. But what determines whether a trade is worth putting on? Well, more important things to focus on would be things like liquidity. Is the underlying asset actually liquid? That's the number one most important thing. Trade liquid underlines. Probability of profit is probably the next most important thing, right? What are your odds of actually winning on the trade? IV rank is a very important thing to consider. Also, risk versus reward is important. Make sure you're not risking too much for too little a reward. The four primary option Greeks are Delta, which we've already discussed on video, Theta, which we're discussing today, and then there's two others, Gamma and Vega, that I may discuss in future videos if you guys want. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see videos as well on Gamma and Vega. So what exactly is Theta? Well, Theta's one of the primary option Greeks, and it represents the rate of decline in the value of an option as time passes. So where Delta was telling you how your options value increased or decreased based on the price of the underlying stock going up or down in value. Theta tells you how your options pricing goes up and down in value based on the passage of time. So the time value of an option is always decaying, right? The passage of time never ceases, right? Time marches on. That is the sure thing that you can always bet on. Time will pass. And if you bought the option, Theta is a negative force that's working against you because if you bought the option and Theta is decaying the value of that option, well, that's bad for you because if you're long the option, you bought the option, you want your option to increase in value. You don't want it to decrease in value, but it will constantly decrease in value strictly from Theta. So Theta is always a drag on your long option positions. But if you're short the option, if you sold the option, theta is a positive force because it's always working to help you because that passage of time is always decreasing the value of your short options, which again, if you're short the option, that's exactly what you want. You want that option to lose value. When looking at theta on your trading platform, it will be a negative number typically for all options as the time value of all options declines over time. That makes sense. But really, whether theta is actually positive or negative for your P&L depends on whether you are long the option or short the option. If I switch over to my trading platform, which I'm using Tasty Trade as my trading platform, and let's go to the option chain. I'm already on Google. Let's go to the Google option chain. Let's go yeah, the 63 day uh, cycle here in April. So uh, I don't have theta as one of the columns here in the option chain. Typically, I only use uh, bid, ask, delta, and either open interest or volume. But if I wanted to, I could change open interest to theta. And you can see theta is negative over here on the call side. Theta is also negative here on the put side. So all of these options are losing value as time passes. Now, remember, when you're looking at the Greeks on the option chain, they assume that you're going to buy the option. So when you're looking at things like Delta and things like Theta and probably the other Greeks, Gamma and Vega, when you're looking at them, those are the values if you buy the option. If you sell the option, it's going to be exactly the opposite. For example, on the call side here, all the Deltas are positive, right? Because if you buy a call 
you have long delta. But what if you sell a call? Well, these deltas are really negative deltas then, right? They're short deltas. So instead of a, a positive delta, it will be a negative delta. Same thing with theta, right? Theta is negative if I buy a call, for example, over here on the call side. But what if I sell a call? Well, if I sell a call, theta is going to work for me if I sell a call. Theta is only negative if I buy the call. And if we go over here to the put side, I have bid, ask, and once again, delta is this column, theta is this column. You can see uh, delta are all negative on the put side because if you buy a put, you have negative delta, right? It's assuming you're going to buy the option. But what if you sell a put? Well, if you sell a put, then your deltas are actually positive, right? So you'd have to reverse it. And the same thing with theta. Theta is negative because it assumes you're going to buy the put. But if you sell a put, your thetas are actually positive. They're working in your favor. Now, theta, I, I really don't need to look at theta for putting on positions as far as trade selection. Once again, the Greeks, not really needed for trade selection. You typically don't use them. I'd much rather have this column be volume or open interest is typically what I look at. I do keep delta, the Greek delta, even though I don't make a trade based on the delta of an option. Delta does give me uh, essentially a quick way to gauge probability of profit on the trade. So that's why I have delta. But again, theta, it's not something you really need to worry about as far as when you're trying to put a trade on. It's after you already have a trade on. Then the theta makes sense, right? And then this column here, the theta value, for example, this Intel position, sold a put, 41 DTE, right? What is the theta? Well, the theta is positive 2.26. So you, what that essentially tells me is that every single day that passes, I should make $2.26 on that time passage for that option. And that kind of makes sense because I'm, I sold a 42 put today, right now, Intel is trading at 43.50, we'll call it 43.50. So I'm a dollar 50 out of the money. So there is no real value, no intrinsic value to this option. It's essentially all time value. And how much time value? Well, the option is currently trading for $1.27. That's its current value right here, right? That's the mark price. There's also a volatility component to the options value as well. But again, this option, if today was expiration date and this option expired, this option is actually worthless, right? So all of the value baked into this option is essentially time and volatility. So these theta numbers, this theta column, that's giving me that, that time value to that option, at least uh, the daily time value. Remember, theta tells you how much you can expect on a daily passage of time. So this XHB position here, so this is the Home Builder Sector ETF. I've got a strangle going on. If I look at the position as a whole, you can see I've got 5.8 positive deltas. That means that strangle is losing value every day, $5.82. That's nice, right? I can even even all the other factors being equal. If the stock never moves, volatility never increases or decreases, all other factors, if they remain the same, just the passage of time, I should make five dollars and eighty-two cents every day on that position. So that is theta. And that is why so many traders, options traders, want to be option sellers. Because options really are meant to be sold. It's because the passage of time, again, you can't stop it. So why not be on the right side of it? Because if I'm an option seller, theta is working for me. If I'm an option buyer, theta is always working against me. So that really is why so many options traders you know, are proponents of strategies, short selling strategies, such as, you know, selling short strangles or selling short puts, selling things like covered calls, people that run the wheel strategy, which is essentially selling uh, short puts and short calls, sometimes in conjunction with also owning stock. Part of what makes the wheel strategy so profitable is that theta component. It's that passage of time on those short options that were constantly churning, right? That's, that's how you make a lot of your money using some of these short option strategies. It's simply because theta. So profiting from theta decay. As time passes, the likelihood of an out-of-the-money option expiring in the money decreases and the options value decreases accordingly. So if you have an out-of-the-money option, like I had that out-of-the-money put in Intel, you know, the closer we start getting to expiration and, you know, that out of the money option, 
its likelihood of actually finishing in the money starts to decrease because we don't have a, as much time left, right? So the more time you have left, the greater that that option could eventually end up in the in the money. But if we don't have a lot of time left, that out of the money option, the likelihood it's going to finish in the money starts to drastically decrease. That means your options value is going to decrease. And of course, if you're an options seller, that's what you want. You want that options value to decrease. Now, an option that has a lot of time left in it, it's going to have more time value baked into it, where an option that is expiring this Friday, it's going to have very little time value remaining in it. So that's just common sense, right? So if you go way out, say a year out, maybe you're uh, selling a leaps option, right? There's going to be a ton of time value in that option. You're going to receive a huge premium for selling that option that far out because there's so much time value that hasn't come out of that option just yet. But there is a downside to selling options that far out in time, and that's that theta really doesn't start to increase until kind of late into the life of an option. Really, I would say in the last 60 days, that's when theta really becomes worth it. And that's why, for example, the uh, Tasty Trade gang, you know, they like selling options around the 45 DTE mark, right? Or, but they may go 30 days to 60 days, 45's in the middle, but you know, that 30 to 60 day range, that's kind of when you want to put on a short options position because theta is really decreasing at that point. And as you get very close to expiration, theta is drastically reducing the value of that option. Where if you've got something that's one year or even two years or three years out, depending on how long you're selling your leaps options, yes, there's a lot of value in that option, but you're not going to see that value come out of that option until several months or in some cases, a couple of years have passed in those very long dated options. So if you want to sell options, options that are very far out in time, they really don't provide you much theta, which kind of reduces the benefit of being the option seller in that case. Honestly, with those very far out options, these leaps options, you might actually consider buying the option if you're going to do options that far out in time, because since theta doesn't have as much of a, an impact on the option price, being an option buyer a year or even two years out in time makes much more sense. So let's talk about the 4521 DTE rule. So what this is, is you want to put on your short option positions, typically around the 45 DTE mark, and you want to manage your options position at 21 DTE. So this is basically the tasty trade mechanics, the 45 day and the 21 day rule. And the reason they recommend this is because theta, again, it really starts to ramp up as you get closer to expiration. So if you sell an option that is 100 DTE, 100 days out. Theta, it's not really that high at that point as far as there's still a lot of time value baked into that option, but it's coming out of that option very low amounts per day, right? But that daily theta increases as we get closer to the expiration. So once you get to 50 DTE, then theta starting to really work. Once you get to 30 DT, it's really working. And that's kind of why the Tasty Trade guys, the Tasty Live research team, they typically, you know, they, they always recommend that sweet spot for Theta is selling those options in that 30 to 50 DTE range. Tasty Live also recommends managing all of your option positions at 21 DTE or earlier if you happen to hit your profit target. For example, if you already have 50% of your max profit, if you've set a 50% max profit target, once you get to 50%, take it off even if you're not at 21 DTE. And it, this kind of makes sense why they do 45 days, 21 days, because you don't want to get really too much further out than 60 days because there's just not enough theta to make that short option position worth it. And also 21 DTE and less. Yes, there's a lot of theta. I mean, there's a ton of theta coming out of those options the closer you get to expiration. But the problem with holding options past 21 days is now you also are taking on huge delta risk, huge directional risk, because that late into the option cycle, you know, these changes in the underlying price have huge effects on your delta, your gamma, and it really affects the option pricing, uh, much more so than theta at that point. So you're taking on way too much delta risk if you're holding that late into the option cycle. So much like the Tasty Live team, I recommend especially newer options traders, yeah, stick to the 4521 DTE rule because you're going to get that nice theta decay to help you 
be profitable over the long term, but it also helps to keep you out of trouble because by getting out at 21 DTE, you really should never run into some of those huge um, delta risk, gamma risk situations. So that's just a quick overview of the Greek theta. Theta, of course, again, it tells you about the time decay of your option, how your option loses value as time passes. Now, the main thing, if this is all brand new to you, the main thing to know about theta and, and pretty much options trading in general is that the passage of time benefits the person that sold the option and it hurts the person that bought the option. If you want to learn more about Theta, check out my book, The Super Wheel Option Strategy. I actually have a chapter in this book dedicated to the Greeks. I cover the four primary Greeks, Delta, Theta, Gamma, Vega in that book, as well as, of course, I cover how to trade the wheel option strategy. You'll find a link for my book, The Super Wheel Option Strategy, in the link in the description down below. And for those of you that want further videos, do you want me to cover Gamma? and Vega on video. So let me know in the comments. Peace guys.